Welcome everyone, my name is Mitch and today we're going to start adding the final details for this lion. So, lion's looking really good. I posted on social media and got seven a gazillion likes, even though I'm not really finished yet. So, it tells you what happens for a good three hours of work. I mean, that's not a lot of work and I'm here to teach you all the secrets today because today we're going to do, we're pretty much finished with the face. So what I did is I spent about 15 minutes. Now, we have a viewer named Joan, and Joan said the eyes were too light. So I loaded it into Photoshop, converted both to black and white to compare the values, and sure enough, the eyes were too light. So I just went back and got a soft, dark pastel and just went around the eye, essentially. So now you get that deeper, thicker, uh, darker eye, and, and it looks really good. So I also played around with the background, and what I don't want you to do is draw every hair because if you sit here and draw every hair in colored pencil, number one, you're making a horrible mistake if your the corners of your painting are so amazing that people are staring at that instead of staring at the face, then you probably have a, a problem. So I more or less faded it out and made it look like hairs, a lot of detail. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to save a lot of time here. The first trick is to put in varying degrees of darkness with little gaps in them. And you want the gaps to show the background, all right? And the second trick is going to be, um, when you do the background, instead of just all black, you want different types of black. You want real dark, you want not so dark, etc., etc. Again, with little gaps in it. And you want the gaps to look like hairs. So you get like free hair detail just by using negative space. Second thing we're gonna do, again, negative space, we're gonna come in with pastels and we're gonna make hairs and then we're gonna come in between those hairs and make negative space. So instead of a big thick hair, it looks like a thinner hair, thus it looks more like you did it in colored pencil type of thing. So. That's the main idea here. We're going to do a lot of negative space work in order not to do as much work. And then finally, we're going to come in like this and make noise with the colored pencil. So let's, let's demo that technique. Let's start our background. Let's get it where it looks good and um, see where we go from there. So let me get a glove on real quick and show you the pastels that I'll be using today. So. I have a Giro, a few Giro pastels over here, and it's black, like a lighter tan, or, or light blue, in other words, white, and then I have like a brown, okay? I have a Great American black, I have a Mount Vision dark gray, which is not so black, and then I have a Gray 36, which is called black in unison. And then also in unison, I have some of this, which is sort of like this light tan hair stuff, and you just come in like that and make, you know, details like, like that with the corners. And because Unison is like a harder pastel, when you get with the corner and you just make little marks like that, it looks like little little hair detail, but you didn't actually do anything. So that's sort of what we're gonna do. We're just gonna mix and match up here. So let's get started like right here, for example. If you look at the picture, it's really dark here, and then it's not so dark here. So what I want to do is get the not so dark and put the 450 Mount Vision, which is not so dark, on the side. And again, I don't want to go all the way to the side because the whole picture is shifted this way about a centimeter. So the mat is going to come to here. So I'm not going to come all the way out like that. I just want to get some darkness in here. And you notice. When I'm doing the, the darkness, I'm leaving small gaps, which is going to be where our, our hairs are. And I'm also going in the direction of the hair as well. So you'll see that across through here. So again, I don't want to go all the way out. just want to leave these little spots, gaps, and stuff like that. And we're going to come out through here. And so it already looks like hair, but all we're doing is putting in the background at this point. So it's kind of nice. So get through here, just come down. I realize this is out of frame to some of the camera. Um, and then over there. And so also if you look at the picture, um, you'll notice, so we'll put our 450s of dark gray. So now we want to get our black, which is a hard black. 
and Great American is a soft black. Unison Gray 36 is a harder black. And I want to come in here and get some of this darker area because you have like a darker area here. So I just want to come in and get some of that detail, get some of that nice darkness as we come out a little. So the darkness comes through here and just kind of streams out like that. So we're coming up on some of our gaps, but it's no big deal. And then the darkness is sort of right here. And again, we just have like this, this, this hair detail here. And again, it's a harder pastel, so we get this nice um, detail like right through there. There we go. All right. So, so we have that. Now we want to get our soft black because this is fairly black and we just want to touch it in here so we get like that like a fairly dark dark area right in through there and we'll just touch it here and there again this is a super soft pastel so now you have this nice gradation between a hard a, a deep black and then a not so black over here so we can also get this soft pastel and go ahead and come in across through here and just make this area up there and then through here, et cetera, et cetera. Then we come back through here and make a couple of dark areas. Nothing big, nothing major, but just touch it here and there. And you'll see, look at that. Now that dark area just really made that pop. It really makes it pop through there. So, so that's what you want. You want sort of, I just have three types of dark at this point, right? All right, now it, here, we have this light hair here kind of streaming in. So what I want to do is I want to get a pastel that's a little darker tan. And this is a hard pastel and I just want to come through and just make some hints at, some hints at hairs like this. And again, you can, you can get your cheapo pastel for this because all you're doing at this point is just making some hints of hair. And again, you don't want this really, really bright light you want it to sort of easily coming in. You want different directions. You want all that stuff. So you have this nice, smooth transition of hair. And then occasionally you're just going to let it hit on the, on the flat part to make, um, to make a wider hair. And then, it, then you want to turn it, get it to the sharp point, and this move, to kind of turn it to the side a little maybe, and get like that sharp point and get the detailed hair. So. So you can kind of see here, we're saving our hands at this point. We're not doing like hard, hard work with our wrists and hands and all that. So, uh, so this is nice. So this is one of the things, this is why I like pastel, you can do this like all day. And so a after, as we come out more, this is going to get darker, it's going to get lighter. But for this time, what we want here is like that. All right. So we have a nice variant between here and here. It gets dark, it gets lighter, etc., etc. So at this point, we want to get our lighter pastels. So we have this one and this one. So let's start with this one. And we want to get, as we come out through here, we want to get lighter. So we have some lighter strokes across through here, through there, and then we have light strokes here, and then it, you know get get a little bit of this color up in the darkness, but not too much. And then as it comes out, it's lighter here, it's lighter there. And you turn it and get that sharp edge. Like that, so that looks pretty good. Look at the thumbnail, I like it, it looks nice. As we come out through here. And again, this is gonna be matted, so Probably going to mat this here at the very bottom. So anything beyond this point is kind of useless to do anything with. And then the whole left side, or the whole right side, far right side is kind of useless. So, all right. And then we want to get our light, light one here and just make more details, smaller hairs, etc., etc. Okay, now at this point we ditch the pastels, go to the pencil. So, take out my glove and we go to different pencils. Hey, Carla. All right, so now we got a bunch of little, different little pencils. So let's do what I was talking about before. You see we have these clumps of hair down here. 
what I want to do is I want to get this pencil and I want to make these fine lines within that. So I have these fine lines here. And we're not making individual hairs yet. We're just getting these lines that are coming through here and streaming and all that other stuff. Uh, like that. And then we can kind of hit hard here to make it a little darker. And, and so what we're doing, we're coming in between the hairs and breaking them up. So now it looks like that. So now we have this nice, smooth transition. Like that. All right. So now we haven't done any individual hairs. And we have this nice coat right there that looks pretty good. It actually looks a lot like the picture. Um, we're going to have whiskers coming out, so it doesn't matter. All right. So now you really haven't done a whole lot of anything yet. Now we get the color pencil. So let's clean this off. All right. Now we have the color pencil. Now let's just come in and make some noise. And being exact would be a terrible thing right now. Different directions, different lengths. And we're getting this light, not light, we're getting this kind of mediocre color coming in through here. And this is sort of coming down like that. So you just want to kind of pretend you're in third grade again. And just go, go bananas. Sounds like sawing again. And then we come up here, this is going up a little bit. We'll go up. Like the last thing you want to do right here is be precise. Like you don't want to go. That's gonna that's gonna look terrible. Alright, on the end it's brighter. So now we get our bright yellow. Bright, bright yellow. And we want a kind of a brighter look down here, but don't do too many of these. You just want kind of a hint of yellow. You come up through here, maybe. There we go. Cool. All right. So that looks pretty good. Obviously we have this harsh transition. We'll take care of that later. Um, for now, what I wanted to do is she had to do a background. So you're pretty much done at this point. I'm looking over and it looks really nice. <laughs> we, we didn't do anything at all. <laughs> like, like just sit there, like you just watch TV. Watching TV. Get her white come in here. We got some bright colors in the through there. All right, looks nice. So, congratulations. You have made a bunch of individual hairs, or so it looks, and you didn't do a whole lot of nothing. All right, speaking of a whole lot of nothing, let's come in through here. Let's handle this transition. So, first thing you want to ask is, what's wrong with this? And what's wrong with it is, it's a harsh transition, and there's not enough little black specks coming across through there. And so we're gonna, we're gonna negative space this by putting in black. Negative space means I'm not drawing every hair, I'm drawing between every hair. All right, so then you have that. And I think the second problem is we don't have any brown. 
Alright, second problem, we don't have any brown down there. So, let me fix that by magically getting this dark brown. Is that going to work? No, we need more tan. We need more tan. And Chinese white, white, uh, what is this? Ochre? So this is sort of a tan. Let me put some of this like that. So this is a tan color. So what we can do is just extend that down a little bit through there. And the tan is coming down through here, kind of extending a little bit. Again, we have another harsh transition up here and it's caused by not enough tan streaming down through there. Um, I sort of like it. just goofing around at this point. It's looking pretty good. Get some of this dark brown and I just want to get a little bit of this brown into this light area here because as we come through like that and then a little black and then we'll stop messing with it. That's the hardest part is stopping and messing with it. Uh, okay, looks pretty good. Uh, all right, it looks all right. Still think we have an issue with it, but I'm not gonna mess with it. I'll mess with it later. I think the issue is that we need less of a transition between those two areas and. I think that the transition is too much of a straight line. We need like a little place down here it comes out. Anyway, so that's, I mean, that's effectively, you can stop there. Uh, looking at the picture, nobody's going to really look at that crap anyway, so who cares? Um, looking at the thumbnail, which is going to be the, what people see in reality, it looks pretty good. So let me increase the size of this application so the thumbnail is a little bigger. All right, so look, yeah, looking at the thumbnail, I think we're pretty good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is move on to more, um, more background areas. So we have this light area up here, and that is just like pure yellow. Um, not really sure how to approach that. I guess we could get like a yellow. The problem is it goes out of frame, um, it looks like that we're gonna have to mat it here. And by the way, I'm gonna show you guys how to mat this. Frame it, we're gonna frame it, mat it. I'm gonna take you guys to the store and uh, film, film me frame shopping and explain what's good, what's bad, what could ruin this, what makes it better, what highlights the uh, different parts of the animal, etc. So, uh, so it looks like we're gonna mat it here. We're gonna cut, we're gonna cut our own custom mat as well. So let me just draw that out. Um, here's where it stops, it goes here, and then it looks like that is our mat there. And then down here, I believe that this right here is going to be our mat. So we got from here and then down to here. Alright, so let's plan for that. And... Let's put on a glove and make this really yellow. I didn't plan to get done this fast. In fact, we're only like 10 minutes in. Alright. So, let's just go for the gold. Go for the gold. 
a little bit of this goes a long, long way. All right, then that's just white. Then I'll make sure to blend this in. Again, the problem that you have with anything this vibrant is a little bit goes way too long. So we have a lighter yellow in our kit, and this is more of a desaturated yellow. We're going to use that for like coming in through here, sort of thing. And in there, we have this bright, bright part. And again, we're just going to rub that through and have it like that. All right, so that looks pretty good. And then we have this this obnoxious white and let me find an obnoxious white what is this this is art spectrum i need to use some of this up warm white perfect and the warm white we're going to come in through here and that is coming right through here if you look at the picture through there and sort of reaching in and sort of curling in through there. And the light is what's really gonna make this picture shine, no pun intended. All right, so it looks pretty good. And and just get this yellow and tame it out a little bit, not much, but just a little with some pastel dust. And we're going to come in with this whitish bright area here, and then that transitions to a so then that transitions to a what is that? That's a sienna? Maybe? Santa Fe. We'll do a Santa Fe. We're back to Great American. We don't wander our way from Great American too much, do we? Right, we'll do a Santa Fe 110.2. Wow, that's like a portrait color. That's not going to do us. Uh, okay. Could get a lighter yellow like Havana. So, yay. We'll try some Havana. That is. It's a nice, soft pastel coming in through there. Like that. And then as we come in through here. in like that because of like a harsh sunlight area here all right cool so that looks all right looks sort of cool and then we have a bunch of dark so we'll do that put so yay back wherever it was we'll for later now we'll come back to our regularly scheduled pastels like like a dece and we get our dark gray. So we want this to extend out from his head, like it does here. And then it hits these things there, and then that comes across like that. And then we do have it where it hits here, but we have a dark area that's sort of coming in, sneaking in through there. like a darker area coming out through there like that All right, cool so now I want our 
color that looks like these. We have this weird blend between light and dark right in between there. So that comes down right next to the eye, so we're good there. So now the tricky part here is going to be transitioning this properly. So we need a transitional area, which is going to be like right there. That's going to be sort of sneaking in up through here with little small dots, then going across through there. Then we have a little bit of it because you can't just have this bright area and it comes into dark you have to have some sort of a effect on the darker area all right so that looks pretty good we'll come in and detail that with pencils and in between those lighter areas you have like a dark and so we're going to get our famous 359 359 come across through there and get our dark area that's right here kind of curls around and then we're gonna go up through here And again, we're gonna shave the right hand section of this completely off, so. All right, so looking at the thumbnail, wow, looks pretty good. <laughs> this complimenter old work. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Nice thing. I think so. Well, hey, if you don't like your own work, why are you doing it, right? All right, just wanna get edges of that and hit that up. So that looks all right. Now we need a bunch of little details in there, but before I start that, how high does that come up? Yeah, it comes up pretty high. Again, we're getting just these little, so sorry about the shadows thrown on here. I did order a, a lighting kit, which should be here Tuesday. So the next video will have better lighting. Right, I like that, that looks pretty good. And then we'll have some sneak in a little of this across through there. Because this is a pretty prominent color up top here. You gotta be careful with this up top because it's not as saturated up there than it is here. So here you kind of have that yellowish, more highlight, highlight area. So we've got a good color for that, which is this. And as we come up to the top, obviously the light source is up there. So you want to, all right. So time for Le Pencil. I need a lot of different pencils. We'll get, we get to use our bright yellow. It's not sharpened. OK, 
Okay. Prismacolor always leaves this little wax thing hanging out there. Um, okay, so here we have this area, but I want it to stay bright. But I want to have something in the background here, because right here, this is a bit too bright. And again, we're not going to um, not going to have a lot of the right edge on the actual painting when it's done. We're going to mat that out. So I don't want to be too precise over here, but I do want um, what looks like individual hairs. And what we're doing is coming here and just doing the negative space. Art 101, negative space. Just do some curls there. Have some curly sections here and there. Just press light. Like that. And then instead of having this dark square that we have right here, we're just gonna have it come out a little bit like that. And then up here, this harsh section, gonna have it curl out a little bit. And then up here, and again, we're gonna mat this out, so I'm not too concerned. So right here, we have a whole lot of tan. So I'm gonna get this tan, which is not working at all. So I'm gonna get this brown, and I'm gonna come in with this brown and press light and pray that it looks tan. It looks all right. So we're coming in with this brown. And it gets the yellow, it looks sort of tan. Holy moly, that's sharp. Not sharp. Come on, Prismacolor, do me right. All right. Come up through here. Again, want to blend that in. Instead of having that big square, and it just goes nowhere. And then we have more of these squares up here. I want to get rid of that square looking shape and just kind of blend that out too. And as you come up through here, we have like a darker section of brown, just some curls like that. Just goes up through there. So that's our light, that's our lighter yellow up in here. I know you can barely see that, but it'll register in the eye. Come back in through here and get more hairs across through there. Just let that bright, bright yellow peek out. And I want to, again, I don't like these shapes. These shapes are weird, so I'm gonna get rid of them. So I'm just gonna have that by bringing that out, something like that. So now it looks more like a hair instead of a square. shape and this comes out through there we have like this random shapes there okay so that looks like hair it looks pretty good and then up here I want this section coming up so up here we have that brown I want that extending out just so it looks like a railroad pattern coming down and then we have just pure yellow and we do have that I got the pure yellow. You want pure yellow? I'll do pure, pure yellow up here and bring that. And we need to blend that in. That yellow just comes down and through there. Don't let it stop there. It just blends in through a little bit. That yellow comes in through here. And then as you come in through there, you got more of this brown. So this is kind of an idea. Like that, so it looks pretty good. And then we have like a curly cues that are coming in through here and then sort of an area out there, area out here. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. And then we have this bright, bright, bright yellow. It sort of starts right here, doesn't it? So you want you want little short hairs, like little dots, because that's what it looks like, little dots. And you gotta kind of control between little bitty railroad track dots and other stuff, because you come down through here, it's all dots. And 
then you have these long hairs like that. Same here, you have these dots. And the dots kind of infiltrate a little bit in here, right? Like that, so that looks pretty good. All right, I like that. So at this point, looking at the thumbnail, I think we need a couple more different colors. And we'll do that by coming in here with this tan. All right, so that looks pretty good. And uh, now let's handle the area underneath here. So it just needs a little attention. The problem is we have a straight line coming down through here and you can't have like a straight line. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to touch this with the Derwent Drawing Black and just bring in these darks from up here down in through his face. I assume it's a hurt him. That sort of offsets this up here because this is a bunch of shorter hairs that are coming up through here it's a mix of black and white so that looks like shorter hairs all you need is to come in with your super pencil and I'm just stabbing upward You don't want to do a whole lot of work here. You're just stabbing upward real light. You just want these shorter hairs here that are just coming up and decorating the top section here. We can come in with a triple pencil if you want to and do that. Get a triple pencil. Um, and just make, I realize you're not gonna see what this, what I'm doing, but I'm just doing this. So we get our uh, shorter hairs up in here like that with a triple pencil, with the triple shot. You knew I was lazy. You knew I was gonna invent something like this. pretty good so the triple shot doesn't leave really harsh marks and I do want to leave some harsh marks so again I'm going to come up in here and put in here with our super pencil with just These are pretty prominent hairs up in through here. All right, and then I'm um, going to get her black and do pretty much the same thing. Because we have a harder black mark up here. I'm 
always come up through here, we have this area here. So now we want to come in and relieve some of these areas with a little bit of this pink. Like it's not going to be like a substantial difference up here, but what it's going to do is relieve the, the really prominent and annoying yellow that we have up here. So you just want to kind of break that up a little bit. So coming out through there and through there and sort of just break that up like that. So that's gonna look nice. Obviously I need to work on it a little bit more, but for a beginner start here, we're looking pretty good. Okay, so at this point, I'm pretty happy with that. And looking at the thumbnail, that looks pretty good. So now we have this area up here that still needs to be a little bit brighter. Instead of bringing in white, we're just gonna do this color here and just make it a little brighter so it's not quite white so it's not going to look completely obnoxious again come through here just a little bit of that and again as we come up through here I'm gonna get a little bit of this I think it's almost a skin tone well, like that and then down through here this is a fairly prominent white section through here that we want to just come in and get make sure that we represent that it looks pretty good and that looks all right except for needs a little bit cowbell here like that and then through here like that all right i like it i like it a lot all right, and then as you come up here, you have less of this white highlight area and just coming up through here. All right, so it looks pretty good. So as we're coming across through here, you'll notice we have this tan background, which is courtesy of the paper called Thicket. And in between the tan, I want some individual hairs like this across in through here. And then we have a darker area that's coming up like right in through there. So again, if you push it, you get these nice thin hairs. Not so much here, because there we have more of a brownish black kind of thing. So we'll get this dark brown Derwent drawing, one of our favorite, and come across through there like that. So that gives us this nice brown across through here. And then as we have across through here, we have a darker area. Then as we come up, like that. And then get to black. And the black's gonna come up and then we have hairs up in through here. Make sure and keep this nice, nice gradation. Back right through here between these brown areas and then these tan areas. And what you can do instead of using black to get that darker section, we can come in here with our we come in here with our 
yellows and sort of simulate a tan as well. So you can also do this with your pastels, but for now we'll simulate this with this yellow. This sort of a tan right here. Because if you just put white in here, you're missing that little yellow tint that you sort of need right in here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with this and press kind of hard and just go like this. And that's gonna give us this nice tan highlight because we have a lot of that through here, especially. You turn it on its side and just whack it. You have these nice little short hairs there. Like that, so that looks pretty good. And then you add to that with your blacks, get our Prismacolor black, and you want these individual hairs right here. You don't want just a, an area of dark. You want it to really come out with the individual hairs right in this area here. Like that. And again, here we have these individual black hairs across like that. Just want that variance. That variance is what will give it the reality. 3D look and stuff like that. So it's light overall. And then you come in here with your yellow. We'll do the bright yellow. And just give it a hint of that along through there. But you need to lighten it right here. You don't want a lot of that because that'll get really obnoxious really fast. That looks pretty good. So let's finish this goatee section, this bottom section down here. And we're gonna do that with our Grand Pastel Selection down here. So again, just get some darks. And I'm gonna come up into the goatee a little bit, not much. And we have a, like a long section that goes through here and we have a section that comes up through there. And as you're doing this, make sure that you are going in the direction of the hair. What you don't want to do is just go one direction the whole time. So you can see I'm making little marks, uh, little gaps, sorry, of the marks here. So you have little gaps that sort of look like hairs. And again, we're only going to come down to here and stop. So um, that's where we're going to mat it. And again, we'll, we'll head to the frame shop together, me and you. Just me and you. I'm gonna go to the frame shop. I'm gonna show you guys like framing, what's gonna ruin it, what's gonna make it better, what's going to enhance the, um, the lion. So you sort of get an idea, because I know a lot of people ask about that. They'll be like, you know, I, I want to frame this, but I'm just not sure how, especially us guys. Us guys are pretty clueless on that stuff. No offense to us guys, I'm just saying. All right. Um, uh, so just a little motion in there and and again here just want just want a little excitement through there like that is fairly bright in the picture so I'm just gonna just gonna tickle that I'm not gonna like make it really really prominent or scare ourselves with this or anything like that but I do want some pressure on the pastels as we come through there. So you have like that. So just an interesting section. And you can't come over here and tickle this as well. So just a, like a little, little something here and there and like that. It's nice, it's nice. Get rid of that harsh line. Just get something that just brings the whole, like, uh, like the dude said, the rug just brings the room together, so. I like that. I like that a lot. And as we come down through here, we have like this section here. So we'll switch to the harder edge there. Looks all right. Or here we have some of these hairs just curling through here. And these are pretty bright. Some through here, they're not so bright. So anything we can do to not use these colored pencils all the time. 
I like colored pencils, I just don't want to hurt my hand by using those 12 hours. I think like after you use colored pencil for a certain amount of minutes, you need to take a break, but you can sit here and diddle with these pastels like all day, and it just doesn't hurt at all, so it's nice. All right, so we got that, and we got like a little hint of hairs here, and coming in different directions, and all that stuff, so. Got some come over different directions there. All right, so that looks pretty good. So let's deal with um, a, a darker black and just have this dark. So this is a softer pastel, so it's gonna dump a darker color. And all you want is just that little bit of variance in that. So as you come through here, we have just a little bit of a darker color come through there. A little bit of a darker color, nothing prominent in your face, but just a little bit like that. All right, so now let's deal with the goatee. So the goatee, um, what it's doing is it's coming off of the mouth where you have a darker black section here. And there's so many pencils you could use for this. You could use, you can use my whole handful of pencils. No, you can use a charcoal pencil? A charcoal pencil <gasps> does wonderful. You just come in through here and just do a little bit like that. Make the mouth not look sideways. Looks like he's making like one of those emojis. Just like that. And then you come in in different directions. A little bit through here. Just a little bit across through there. And this is pretty dark up here. So we're going to put a little more up near the top. And then as you come down, you have like these little lines that go through there, come up through there, come th across through there. And then as you come down, it's less black. So I'm going to press a lighter on the black here. This is just a little less. And then we're going to just come through there. Like that. Okay. So at, at this point, it's not as dark. So instead of making like these really, really dark lines from here down. What we're gonna do is get some tan up in there. And so we have our sort of tannish pencil here and we're gonna make some thin lines. We're gonna make some thin lines with this and see how that works out. So that works out pretty good. And then the last thing you wanna do is come through with your white. What you don't wanna do is make this whole thing white. It's gonna look terrible. It's gonna be embarrassing for you, I'm telling you now. Just want some, you want some dark, and a little light in the background, and we're gonna come in here with a brown and make a little darker sections too. But this is really tan, and you have like a light background back there on some of this. And so that's what you wanna do here. All right, so now we have the tan. Now we're gonna come in with a dark brown, and we're gonna blend in with this tan. See, so it's not like all really bright and it's not all, you know, black and white sections and stuff like that. You have these different types of hairs through here. And you're just establishing this dark because we're going to obviously come up and put, uh, put some white on top of this. So you just want something interesting in the background. You don't have to do a lot of detail and make sure the hairs are going different directions and you can come in here and just sort of randomly do it as long as you're in the direction of the hair. So you see right now, even though we haven't even put a lot of white in here, it already looks pretty good. So now at the last part of this, you come in with your uh, stay below colored marking pencil and you want to get some fairly white hairs through here. and just turn it in different directions. As you come through here, we have like some coming out there. Coming down. You got little hairs up and through here. And this is an important section because it's on the face. 
normally I would not get this detailed. I would just randomly make marks everywhere. You know me, if I don't have to work at something, I'm not going to do it. But this Stabilo pencil, the reason I like this so much is because it just dumps a lot of wax. So that's gonna be handy for us. So you sort of wanna keep this sharp as you can because this is a fairly detailed and small haired area here. And again, different directions. Some pressing hard, some light. Get that nice variety in there. All right, and we want to get, again, pressing harder. So that looks pretty good. Look at the thumbnail, that's nice. And we could have worn out our pimple. We'll give it a little sharpen there. All right, and so now we want to get the long hairs that come down through here. But before we do that, we want to kind of warm up this area. And we're gonna do that with our, do that with our Derwent drawing. What I want to do here is come in with a black and come up like this. So it's a negative space thing again, like we just discussed. And you want to make sure it's not all the same length. You want to just come in through here. sneak in a background to this because in a minute we're going to come in with a white and extend that white out and I want a nice set of darks coming up through here that's going to give us that base because if you just do white on top of white you're just going to be sitting there and struggling with it not making much progress because it's just not going to look all that good. All right, I like that. Okay, so at this point, now we come back with our magic white pencil and we start coming out across through there with hairs. So now we get into the real stuff here because that's coming through. We got a hair coming down through here. through there and we got shorter hairs here so you don't want it all the same length obviously and then come out through there and pressing lighter pressing harder and as you come out here you got a hair coming out through there got a couple of straggling hairs through here And then let's sharpen this again. Sorry to sharpen it every 10 seconds, but it's important to get a fine tip on this, especially when you're getting these little detailed hairs through here. All right, and so now as a final thing, I'm gonna come in with a Derwent drawing Chinese white, and what I'm gonna do is just dump wax. What I want is some really, really light, bright, light areas mixed in here. So this is just a wax dump, just to get us something interesting. Across through there. You have this bright area right here. So again, it's just a dump of wax. That's all you're doing here. The bright area right here. Right area right there. All right, 
right, cool. So you have that nice variety. It's not all the same thing coming through. So you have a nice, interesting variety. We got nice hairs coming down through there. And at this point, you can go through and just make your um, make your hair variation across through here. So what we're going to do, we're just going to have our random hairs everywhere down through here. And again, we're not coming all the way down. So I just want some junk, just noise. Uh, I know I have noise going through there and I have noise coming across through here like that. And then I have noise coming through there. And then over here we got a lot of noise. We got this dark section that blends into the light right there. And we got a noisy section over here different directions just to get some noise in there all right and then as a final thing what we're going to do is we're going to get our bright 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 white and this is just a unison white and i just want to touch it in the wax bloom area just touch it give it that really weird interesting look like that see that that's cool that looks really cool I like it and and then from there we're just gonna come up and um, uh, make a make a couple of hairs down through there like a hair here so that looks pretty good and then we come back with our unison and we want to do what we did here so we're just going to duplicate that at this point and just come in and make more prominent hairs across there, through there. And we don't want to compete with the goatee. I do want just some interesting stuff coming around through there. Cool. So we're not competing with the goatee directly, but we do have just some interest in there. And we can come back with our uh, black as well. And this is just our 513. And come in here and just make, um, make some of the darker darks in there. Especially near the goatee. Just have some of a darker dark. So that looks pretty good. It's not exact to the picture, but whatever. So you see the darks really, really make that pop. Like that, that looks pretty good. Yeah, sneak a dark up in there, like that. So that way you can see the interest in that. Cool. So that's essentially the goatee and the bottom section. Looks like we need to bring the hairs down a little more, so um, we'll do that. So looking at the picture, these hairs do come down a little more than what we have. So that's okay. Just come down with individual hairs again. And mess with this a little bit more. That looks pretty good, and it looks um, it looks like the picture at this point. So I'm pretty happy with it. All right, so that covers our bottom section. All right, now let's move on to the top. So like we've done in every other section, the top of the lion is, is well lit. So what you don't want to do in this well lit area where you have this bright, bright yellow over here, and then you have um, well lit section over here. What you don't want to do is you get your really deep dark blacks and spooge them all over the top. What you want to do is you want to get your gray. So get like Mount Vision 450 which is just going to be your gray and that's going to be your just going to be your base so you're going to come in here and just hit the base with this stuff so it's like the ace of base just right here and get this section in there and again we're making just 
hairs. It almost look like hairs coming down. So we're gonna get and go the direction of the hairs, which is up here and through there. And then we do have some darker sections up here, but what I don't wanna do is make this really, really dark all around. I just wanna get some background at this point. So again, our mat is gonna is gonna be from like here, uh, like an inch. No, listen, that half an inch from the right. It's gonna start. It's gonna go all the way to the edge. Um, so because we sort of snuck this too far to the left when we traced it, but that's all good. So again, I get this gray coming up through here, and that's gonna come up around through there. And our mat is going to stop up top right there. Alright, so nice, nice gray coverage up through here. Alright, yeah, and that's sort of dark right there, and then it starts getting brighter across through there. So that's good. Alright, just get some there. Alright, cool. So that gives us our base, and to the base we want to get our um, not so dark but not so light color and just put some in there see so it already looks like the hairs and what you have is you have this area from the eye if you go up right here it starts with a bunch of hairs coming out like a these and we want a dark base what you don't want to do is get a really light color and just spam it all through here you want to get a darker color and then another darker color and a not so light color and then you will finish with your light and that's going to give it the nice mixture that everybody is going to enjoy looking at. You come in through there and then you have a darker color here and then as you come in through here we have a fairly light area up top. So all the hairs come up through there, like that. Get her just a base. So this is just base coating. I know we already did base coating stage, but since we didn't do these parts, we now have to base coat this. All right, so that looks pretty good. And now we come in through here. So that looks pretty good. Now we just have to detail it. Obviously you can't leave it like that. And put this up here. And blend out that yellow, make it not so harsh. All right, looks pretty good. Uh, cool, that looks really good. All right, then we have our lighter color, and this is another Juro. And before we come in with the pencils, let's see what we can get with the lighter color. And you don't want like a whole lot of it, you just want it on the edges and such. Like that, and then there's some like dropping down into his face. Then you just have some curls. And up here is where it gets pretty light. There it gets light, and then as we come down through here, it's lighter at the top, but it's not as light at the bottom. And then we have this space here. Cool, and now we have our darks. 
and we're going to get our black 200 just coming through here and touch it where the darks are a little bit of this here because we do have a darker area there I like that that sort of through there cool just blend that in a little all right to get the whole thing and just blend it in a little bit so now you just have this idea of a bunch of hairs without the excruciating detail of that. All right, so now this is your base. This is your ace of base to come in and draw pretty much detail. So now we just come in with different colored pencils and we're just gonna draw a lot of detail in through here. And then that will be pretty much it. And it's gonna look like this. It's going to be essentially the same to where you have your highlights with the big, bigger pastels in the corner of those. You have your pencils to make a bunch of noise, and then you have these bright sections up here to where it's lighter. It's not going to be this brutal yellow, but it's going to be pretty light. We have a lot of different pencils that we can use that for. So hopefully this has been helpful, and I hope you guys try this lion. I mean, go to wildlifereferencephotos.com and pick it up for a couple of bucks and, and give it a shot. So it's, it's not that bad. It's not exactly easy, but, and um, it's a lot of fun. So I hope this has been helpful and hope you guys have a great day.